I've gone different AI sources and asked questions, and these things are not like politically neutral. So how do we bring all that in and make sure that people are actually getting good information? Back to Kristen's point about disinformation, um, AI can disinform people a lot faster than, than not. Well, again, this came up at the um, IDC conference yesterday, and one of the things they pointed out is there are certain regions that are creating regional AI hubs so it projects their view of the world. So mm -hmm. everyone's got a frame of reference, okay? I'm not religious. Some people are super religious. There's a jillion freaking religions. And then many of the religions have sub-religions. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, you have the overarching religion and the two sub-religions fight with each other, let alone fight with other religions. And same thing from a company and a nationalistic perspective. I have that mastery in Chinese history, so I'm a history major, even though Demetrius laughs that I'm in IT, IT but I am a history major. <laughs> and everything is going to be exacerbated by AI. And they specifically pointed out a region of the world that has gone to great lengths, who has a ton of money to create their own AI generative technology that focuses on their culture and their religion and won't bring in stuff from other cultures, other countries, other religions, let alone if we ever discover other planets with life. It's all focused on them only. So no offense, but it's almost like the capability of a dictatorial regime to brainwash their population because they're not going to bring in all of what AI could bring in. They're literally going to bound it. And these guys have got billions of dollars um, and they've already spent billions. And this was all documented in the IDC um, stuff that they showed and said, that's just one example. Other regions of the world are actually work on the exact same things as this one has been more public. So that changes the ball game because what is the truth? As Chris said, yeah. what is the truth? And quite honestly, yeah. there's multiple truths. That's the reality, whether we like it or not, That because it's all based on your frame of reference. And I, I also wanted to interject as well. So when you're talking artificial intelligence, one thing that you have to remember is that we're talking about data, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the ethical use of data and especially in, in context of like backup and recovery. Now that's going to transcend mere regulatory compliance. And so it's, it's going to touch on the very core of trust. And someone else mentioned this earlier, trust and transparency in the technology. And so as we navigate some of these complexities of AI development, the principles and, and also the privacy and data protection component of it is going to be huge. And so ethics and AI is going to demand that transparency. Um, and that means that we're going to have to start making sure that the workings of AI systems are um, understandable as possible. And not only that we're complying with these regulations like GDPR and the, the right to be forgotten, the right for explanation, but we're also building trust with these systems as well. And secondly, the principle of fairness is also going to need to be embedded into these systems as well, because we're also seeing people do what's called data poisoning, where they're tricking the AI system by continually prompting it in different ways, changing certain words, and getting the information from that AI system that it's not supposed to divulge. So these are, these are just a few things that, that we are going to definitely have to work a lot harder on just from a, an individual perspective and also from a corporation perspective as well. Well, I just thought of a great company, a company that protects <laughs> AI systems from phishing attacks because you just described somewhat of a phishing attack and the AI doesn't know. So maybe I should start a company where our job is to protect AI systems from outside attack because it can be poisoned. And I think one other comment right. is there are some people who've done the trust thing and tried to at a corporate level. For example, mm -hmm. think of what went on over the past 18 months with facial recognition mm -hmm. and its use by in the in the criminal, you know, by the police departments and governments trying to quote protect people. And, you know, several people have backed off. IBM was one, Microsoft on the facial recognition, because they're mm -hmm. saying that these certain people of this hair color or this height were always criminals and it came back that way. And no matter yeah. what they did, they couldn't change it. So if you're a police department using it, you're going to say that all blonde haired people uh, like to use knives and rob gas stations or brown haired people are the ones that commit burglary and blonde haired people won't. So the, of course the Southern California bleach bond, not gray hair on my foot. So I'm the one who's I'm, I'm breaking into everyone's house. I just broke into 
Chris's house because he's on, you know, on a call here. So I just broke in because I got blonde hair. Well, that's not right either. And IBM and Microsoft, at least in that category of facial recognition with AI, did back up. That said, by the way, people are still using facial recognition with AI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're just going to have to. We'll have to, to that point, Eric, we're going to have to make sure that our user agreements are really strong and transparent. So I know for ours, we've written in a whole AI clause so people know what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, and they understand that there's open source, there's things like that that are involved. So it's not a mystery. So it's, you know, it's a user accepted risk, right, at this point until we have more guardrails and regulations around us. Um, I'm never going to force anyone to use anything, you know, it's their choice if they do. So I think as long as they have all the information they can possibly have about what your product does, that's going to just strengthen our cases and getting these things regulated ultimately. Because if we have best practices already enabled, I think somebody said it a little while ago, that's going to be this, the starting point for us moving forward. Um, and we need to define what those best practices are. So maybe that needs to be another webinar, best practices in AI, just as a thought for this, uh, this group. Um, but I do think we need to do that more and have more of those conversations because we have a lot of, oh, this is the worst case scenario. These are all the things that are going to happen. And, the, and obviously movies have picked up on that because they're really awesome at that. You know, thanks, Jaws um, and those kind of things. So moving forward, we need to have more of these proactive conversations of this is what is happening. This is what we're doing to it, to address it. And hopefully this is the innovation that we're going to move forward with. Da, 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 da. Um, I think if we start having more of those conversations rather than. Uh, oh God, you know, they're hiring a lot of people and it's, it, they're not doing it in an ethical way. And this is really going to change the world. It is changing the world. It's already here. We just have to kind of roll with it now. Um, this is yeah. the new internet, you know, this is happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty crazy to think that in our lifetimes we've had the internet hit and now we've had AI hit. I mean, we've had two major technical booms um, in our lifetimes and it's, it's awesome and terrifying at the same time. But I think that as long as us as a group of professionals within the AI sphere come together with that transparency and the, and want to do the right thing, it's going to be better rather than just the capitalist mindset of let's make as much money as we can before the regulations come in and poo-poo yeah. on everybody. You know? I, right. Yeah. I think the one thing we haven't really touched on yet in this panel is the use of AI by the bad guys. They are going to use it yeah. too. They're already using it. So yeah. if, I am, yeah. if I am the head mafioso of the ransomware, I don't have a bunch of guys like in an old gangster movie, right? Running around with the guns and threat. I'm going to break your legs. I can say that because I'm half Italian. <laughs> I'm going to break your legs. They don't do that anymore. It's all a bunch of guys and girls, right? That have computer science degrees or they're just hackers that didn't go to college. And they're using those tools to figure out how to steal from this guy, how to erase data from that guy, how to penetrate these systems, how to, so the thing we haven't touched on is AI is going to be used by the criminals. And obviously we've already seen AI use, uh, if you will, in a semi-military fashion of one country attacking the other, right? Shutting down power plants. That was all done, you know, cyberly. And yeah. how do you know we weren't using AI to figure out how to turn, how to get through the firewall and then turn off power to city A or city B, which then makes it easier to attack from a military perspective. And that's already happening. So you have, the military use of it, which is kind of weird, but you also have truly crime and crime that's no longer, you know, we're going to rob you with a, a gun, right? Or going to break into your house, but well, really just steal your stuff. And AI is going crazy in that space as, as well. I mean, yeah, we have to assume guys, that's they're hacker already. Gangs. They're hackers, they're gangs. Yeah. We have that's to hard. assume it's already happening here. It is happening. I'll day, tell you what's more, happening. <laughs> it's the more insidious ones that I worry about, you know, is people are going to have to develop a healthy tr distrust of AI responses, yeah. just like we do talking to other humans, right? We have mm -hmm. to assume there's biases, there's motives. You know, I worry about the case of somebody saying I'm using AI to do research on investing. And now somebody's poisoning the AI, giving me bad advice, and I'm going to go and, you know, be defrauded that way. So there's a lot of things that are going to play it out, play out over the next few years. And I think building that skepticism when you interface with AI and, you know, not just taking your thinking cap off and saying, I trust it implicitly. That's the thing we have to learn. We have to be critical thinkers still, right? It's not oh, yeah. like it's going to think for us and people who go to chat GPT just for like a Google search, they need to re-verify that at least three times <sighs> before they can believe it. And that scares me. That's what scares me, Chris, is the fact that people are using it as Google 
Yikes. Well, I look at people getting legal advice off of right now. Or medical like, oh, wow. advice. I mean, medical advice. Really... <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So if, if, if you talk about the bad guys using AI, of course, so it's three things. So it's time. They have time. They have all the time in the world to Patient. hack into your system resources. They have the resources and AI is that resource that's going to help them scale so they can when they get in, you're talking 279 days where they are living on the land, they're moving laterally across your systems, they're checking out um, everything, all the different systems, and just really trying to figure out when to execute their payload. And, and that's when you start talking about having things like a backup plan and being able to back up that data. Uh, there's a few other things that you need to worry about is making sure that you're also auditing or you have regular audits going on as well. So just doing those backup uh, backup audits of your environment. And you're using things like encryption. It's it's an yeah. old school method. So you're encrypting these backups to protect it from these security breaches and also using things like immutable storage. And everyone has an immutable storage or immutable platform today, which is, is more table stakes, but it's still helpful. And then one more thing is access control. So just making sure you have those security controls in place, multi-factor authentication, and you're also uh, making sure that the data retention policies are also things that are set appropriately based on your SLA. So, yeah, we want to continue to make sure that you are protecting your data and you can recover because, you know, the bad guys, they're using it and they're going to get in. Right. Yeah. Which is why the access control is important. Right. Who gets permission to do what. Right. So there are a lot of best practices us as technology providers need to be thinking about for the future.